So Income Architect, uh, Mr. Brad, did a uh, breakdown of the different Bitcoin proxies and uh, how they perform relative to the Bitcoin and each other. And he did have YBTC. Well, I think he had YBIT. I don't know if he had YBTC on there. But uh, the thing about YBTC and YBIT that I don't like is the fact that I was looking on a comparison chart against Bitcoin. And on the daily price action, they underperform at times. And you can see on, on these uh, five that I selected, Coney underperform on a daily basis currently against Bitcoin's price action. Bitcoin's up. 0.3% for the day. Misty's up 0 0.08, so that underperformed. Vital is up 1.34%, uh, and BitX is, a, you know, it's 2x leverage, is up 1.53%. Now, I don't like YBIT and YBTC because I feel like the decay is real for those funds. They're basically just doing options for you on Vital. So keep that in mind. Why, why even bother? You could do options directly on Vital yourself, capture all the premium. So I like Bidal to a certain degree. I've traded in the past. I made money in the past. And something that Brad had alluded to, uh, a.k.a. Income Ar Architect, had alluded to in his video was the fact that any of these funds is dependent upon when you get in. Like Coney had stellar returns up until recently. Now that's uh, undergoing NAB decay because Coinbase, its underlying, is getting hit with different things from SEC charges or wherever else and, you know, just moving up and down, not relative to the Bitcoin very well. Misty kind of a pure form in a way because they're basically just buying Bitcoin. They're not a broker or anything. You know what I mean? And what I say about that is Misty is micro strategy, in my opinion, because that's the underlying micro strategy. So you can actually trade off of that, uh, but you're exposed to a company. And it's the same for Coney because it's exposed to Coinbase and its price action. Now, Bidal is not quite a pure play because it's a futures exchange traded fund. And BitX is 2x leverage against that. So none of these are really like a pure play except for Bitcoin itself. Naturally, you'd have to trade Bitcoin to get direct exposure to Bitcoin. I think the greatest thing you could do is probably, let's add in, uh, not great, but what I'm trying to say is, if you want a pure exposure to Bitcoin price action, it'd probably be IBIT, you know, one of the Bitcoin spot price ETFs. So let's add that one. The reason I go with IBIT over all the rest of them is because it's growing exponentially as most assets under management, and it's from BlackRock. And let's face it, BlackRock controls the planet. So that's why I added it. But currently, IBIT doesn't have options, doesn't pay a dividend. Now, IBIT could be a viable trade when options are finally introduced. They got approval, it's just a matter of time. And at some point, you'll be able to do options on IBIT. And like I was saying before on IBIT, it's got an exponential growth in uh, assets. Look at the AUM. That's assets under management. $22 billion sh uh, in dollars, not shares, dollars. And look at that volume, the average volume, 25 million shares traded per day. Why is that important, you ask? Well, because when they finally get options introduced to IBIT, the liquidity is going to be awesome. You give it a little bit of time, a couple of weeks, and then liquidity will improve. Initially, when options come out, no one's going to be really trading much, and then they'll realize, hey, I can sell covered goals now against my holdings. And you'll see it skyrocket. So my pick for a pure play as close as possible to the price action of Bitcoin would naturally have to be IBIT because it's on the spot price of Bitcoin, just like GLD ETF is on the spot price of gold. So that's more of a pure play. So whatever you do in uh, price action, you could be relatively on point. And you can see it actually outperformed today. So IBIT would be my choice going forward, but I trade all these, and I've traded Missy, Coney. I'm underwater on Coney, actually. I got two puts I'm going to get assigned on probably in January at a cost basis of $15 a share. I'd probably just hold them and maybe average out more puts. If we go, this is the way I trade Bitcoin. I'll look at the charts. So let's go at a chart. I'm real basic. I don't use moving averages. Although I kind of glance at them. So I don't like them on the screen. I have them on top there. I could bring them up if I wanted to. But I don't like them because they look like spaghetti. 
but I want to look at the 50, the 100, and the 200 at times to see where price is relative to those, just at a glance. I use a higher time frame and I pick out consolidation periods and I pick out resistance and support levels. Basically, it's just price action. So if we break above 70K, that would be definitely bullish, right? We'd go back up to old time highs and maybe even beyond that. If we pull back in that shaded area, it's rather bearish, but 52 is a previous support level. So I like using that at, at the bottom of the price action as an entry point potentially. And if it breaks below that, then I look at the next consolidation point, which is around 44,000. So that shaded area is my ideal trading scenario if we break below that uh, 52,000 mark. I trade Bitcoin through one of the proxies in that area. Now, if we just ride this channel between 52,000 and 70,000 and we don't break out, we just chop back and forth like we've been doing, I trade that chop too at the bottom of that chop. So as we pull back, let's say for example, we're at 60K now, as we get the lower range of that under 60K, if we're not breaking into that shaded area, I'll trade that chop. I'll trade it with one of the proxies. I'll pick a proxy to trade off. Now, longer term, am I bullish Bitcoin? Yeah, for the most part, I am. I mean, I'm not trying to be predictive, but I think eventually we definitely get well beyond 100K in Bitcoin. Now, well, we go to a crypto winner. It's hard to say, man, because to be perfectly honest, now you've got smart money really loading the boat on Bitcoin because they have spot price exchange traded funds on the price of Bitcoin. I don't think BlackRock wants to get this back down to 15000 per Bitcoin at any time soon. I don't think that's going to happen. I could be wrong. Don't call me, but I'm just saying I don't think it's going to happen. I think we chop, and at times we break in certain support levels like the shaded area, but I don't think we're ever going to get down on that 15K again. But if we did, if we ever did break below these levels, you got to practice proper risk management. you either got to take stop losses, free up money, and wait and see where it bottoms out. And if it got below, let's say, for example, right in here, where you had that previous resistance that turned into a good, strong, long-term support, anywhere around 29K or 30K and under, I would start loading the boat on the Bitcoin proxy and fold it all the way down even. I wouldn't care. But you got to use the ones that aren't going to decay if you get a prolonged bear market in Bitcoin. Some of the ones that are going to decay the worst are the ones that do options on stuff like Bidal. And Bidal itself would decay really really adversely if you get a prolonged bear market over time where you're just chopping sideways or even chopping down. A lot of the option ones are going to really decay. So that's why I say iBit really should be a, uh, on your watch list as far as any kind of a Bitcoin proxy because it's going to be a pure play on it. So if you drop in share price, you drop in share price without leverage or or futures decay like you get on Bidal or leverage that you get on BidX or or uh, option leverage you get on Misty or Coney or any of them. I bit's not going to have that type of decay. It's going to drop in share price naturally as Bitcoin goes down, but it's an easier point in time where you can start average down cost basis by buying shares and selling cash secured puts on it. And they can do cover calls too. So look for iBit to get options pretty soon, and that's the one I would go with personally. Uh, I do trade all the rest of them that I have on that watch list. So, all right, guys, take care. Bye.